Welcome to the Hymencast, a podcast of the Hyman Settlement School, where we explore the history, culture, and people that make the Hyman Settlement School what it is today, and how this historic institution will continue to serve its mission of celebrating heritage and changing lives in Central Appalachia. I'm Corey Terry. And I'm Jordan Collins. Come through that time. And welcome to episode number 20 of the Hyman Cast. We have, I think we've reached a milestone today, Jordan. We've finally reached... 20 episodes. Oh, yeah. I guess we have. Our our podcast is almost as old as I am. So. <laughs> mm. In terms of years. Congratulations. If, if, if the years it feels correspond like years. to the number. So it does. We st- we're actually we're approaching yeah. the one-year anniversary of the Hyman cast. I think we'll try to do something special for the one year. Oh, boy. Because our it first is. episode aired the, like the first week of October of 2020. Wait, was it 2019? I don't know, Corey. Every day is a blur. It's definitely not 2019. It seems appropriate because I was the first. Was I the first episode? You was. <gasps> when did you start? Twenty twenty. August. August twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I was. I was in the mindset that this was pre-pandemic when we started, but I guess it was during the pandemic, yeah. wasn't it? All of this was during the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were yeah. conceived and exist in the pandemic. Okay. This yeah. existed from surge to surge. <laughs> surge to surge. From sea to shining sea. That's our new. <laughs> From shiny. variant to variant, <laughs> surge <laughs> to surge. Next year we'll be doing Alpha to Omega. Omega. That's our tagline. <laughs> <laughs> Hyman cast from surge to surge. Yeah. Oh God, so when this is over, over, we'll be over. Yeah. So, uh, no. Our area of the world is one of, uh, actually, the highest incident rate right now in the United States. We win! We're think. number one. We're number one in something. <laughs> so... We're all here vaccinated, uh, but we are masked up today just to be a little extra cautious. Yeah, we had a close call last time. Yeah, close call. We survived. We got through it without getting infected. And so. I cannot take another quarantine. So. I should say, did, yeah. Didn't you all quarantine in this room? I quarantined in this room. On this couch behind me for days? Well, I, stayed, I did. I stayed for about clean. three hours, yeah. and I was like, I'm done now. <laughs> you enough. didn't even stay three hours. I, I left to go get something at like my house or something. Um, and then I come back and you were gone. You yeah. just didn't say anything. It was fine. <laughs> just left. Yeah. And I was here. I was trying to get him to do quarantine podcast. I just, just was not to, in the mood for to it. chronicle our suffering, but you didn't do it. <laughs> I think my suffering is thoroughly chronicled. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, so yeah, we got a good podcast today lined up for you. Uh, something we've done before that I wanted to do more often, but just haven't done it. So it's time for a, a st- program staff check-in um i think we did this probably earlier this year back in like march or something with jason and sarah kate um just to do a little check-in and see what's happening and all that good stuff let you know what we are working on and what we're gearing towards but first jordan we have a a sponsor oh yeah Ooh. hold up that mug there Corey. Let's see if you can catch it in the camera. Wow. Thank you, uh, Mandy Fugit Scheffel, who very graciously brought us these mugs. I don't have mine today because I'm going to give you two plugs, <laughs> and that's going to be next podcast. Yeah, so, so Mandy, of the Red Spot and Newt hooked us up with these beautiful um, mugs, um, and I am very grateful. It is, a, it is an excellent mug. I'm, I'm trying to remember who. I have the little... Uh, tag in my pocket of who made it and where it came from oh, look at you Corey, being on being on um, that. and I'm, I'm afraid i'm gonna pronounce her name wrong but it's trisha cahoon from wise virginia uh made these mugs for mandy and the red spot and newt and you can now purchase those mugs at her store i do believe uh it's a wonderful mug i highly recommend it it's yeah. got one of them thumb nubs on it thumb nubs yeah i like yeah. it mm-hmm. like a lazy boy for your for your thumb yeah so a lazy boy for your thumb. <laughs> never felt thumb never felt better. <laughs> <laughs> Do check out Mandy at the Red Spot of Newt, the bookstore in Hazard, Kentucky, and a good friend of the podcast and um, our, Avid supporter. Our first exclusive and official sponsor of wow. the podcast. And, and if, if, yeah, go. if you would like want a shameless plug, <laughs> <laughs> send us things and we will talk about them on the podcast. Yes. So we will do anything for swag. An- anything. Yes. Anything. But uh, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get to this episode. So we've already heard from Sarah Kate's origin story and Kelsey's. So there's only one person left on that list. And that's Josh. So let's hear Josh's origin story. Just right out of the gate. Right yeah, out of the gate. That's, what, that's how we started. Where did you come? <laughs> from whence did I come? Uh, well, I'm Josh. 
I have been here at the settlement school since uh, 2016, February 2016. So I'm going on a few years now. And um, over the course of this time, I mean, I've I'm kind of transitioned into a new role here recently. So when I came, I was our director of advancement, uh, overseeing fundraising and marketing um, and different aspects of our of our giving programs here at the school. And this this spring, probably shortly, probably shortly after you all last had this check in, I think things probably changed. And I now have um, a nice long title <laughs> of uh, yeah. senior director of program development and implementation. And um, that would be where I'm helping steward and cultivate the different programs and the different grants and various things that we do here at Hyman Settlement School that I'm sure we'll talk about more. But I think you want to know prior to that. So We want to know from the womb, from the womb. <laughs> through the life. Well, it was a dark night in April <laughs> in Whitesburg, Kentucky. Um, but so... I've, I grew up around here. I grew up in Hazard, um, uh, Perry County Central, go Commodores, class of 20, 2006, I think. Is that right? Cool. And um, we then went to Moorhead State University, which is a great school. Yes. Sarah <laughs> Kate here, also a fellow Eagle <laughs> with me from Moorhead State. And I, um, I went there and um, got my bachelor's in um, – Communications, advertising, and public relations with a minor in Spanish. Espanol. I didn't Espanol. know that. Espanol. I was. I went to school saying I'm going to be a Spanish teacher. What? That's cool. And uh, that didn't. I couldn't really speak Spanish that <laughs> well. <laughs> never, That's kind of the one thing you need. Never to quite have down. picked up the language. <laughs> 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 uh, picked it up enough. <laughs> we have a minor in Spanish, and. I did, I did do fine. I actually taught Spanish for <laughs> about a year. Wow. I mean, while I was a student. So I taught at, um, at, a, at a little Christian school there in Moorhead called Rowan County Christian Academy. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of like a part-time, like, uh, it was like with kindergarten through like fourth graders. So my level of Spanish was appropriate because <laughs> we did a lot of colors and a lot of... Um, <laughs> A lot of counting Cute. and alphabet songs. I think I still have it on my phone. The obvious H A D A F A song we used to sing. Used to oh, sing. Yeah. And um, <laughs> so yeah, I taught that for a year. I was going to be a Spanish teacher. That um, shortly. That's a nice way of saying this. One, I didn't speak Spanish all that well, <laughs> and was largely uncommitted <laughs> to improving. <laughs> <that>. <laughs> and then two, I, I quickly determined um, that children are needy. <laughs> They, and yeah. they need pencils, <laughs> and they need paper, and they need to go to the bathroom, and they just need many different things. And that's when I was like, you know what? That calm minor should probably become my major, and the Spanish should go down. So, so that was a, a choice that I made, and I, I feel like I'm all the richer for it. And so are the children, for what it's worth. So are the children. Um, but I did enjoy that. I mean, I've always loved um, working with kids and and uh, working in programs and at nonprofits and so that was kind of what I set my sights to do um, fortunately at Moorhead I was uh, I got hooked up early on with the Office of Development and Alumni Relations which was a great thing for me because that's what opened a lot of doors um, for me to work in fundraising so I had great mentors there I will never not shout out Mindy Holly uh, who's now the like the associate vice president of uh, development there at Moorhead State, who uh, was a great mentor to me through the years and and put a lot of faith in me as I worked. I used to run the phone-a-thon program. I started as a caller and just would call alumni. So those, I'm sure everyone that's graduated from college has got those calls from the students that want you to give $25 to the <laughs> Fund for Excellence and, and whatever else. And I would encourage you to always give them money because they work hard and get told no a lot. But so you should give <laughs> or, them. Or at least be nice to them. Or you should at least be nice, <laughs> be nice to them because they are also just students doing their job. Yeah. I just, but, I, I don't feel for universities with that because it's like you put me in debt and then you're like, can I have more money, please? It's like, no. Yeah, your university put you in debt. Mine didn't. Okay. But I know a so lot of people. Again, mine, a lot of people. So mine didn't. So that's why I, of course, I come from a background of wanting to give and philanthropy. So I think you should always give and support. Moorhead State gave me a full ride to go to school there and paid me to go. So 
Um, okay. When Mindy That's and awesome. her team call, I choose to be like, yes, I would love to support that and pay it forward. Because I think that's how we improve um, where we are. Those that can give should, and those that can't give cash should, could possibly give of time <laughs> and of resources or whatever else. You know, there's always something you have to offer to improve your area. But so I worked in uh, a caller, was supervisor there, and then eventually came on staff at Moorhead um, doing graphic design for the alumni relations and events and print pieces and all that fun stuff. And so that kind of took me to um, do fundraising. And then I did that for, I worked at UK for a while, and then also then came to the Appalachian Artisan Center here in Hanman. And I spent a year as executive director there, and it was a fun time before being uh, recruited over here to Hanman Settlement School. And um, I'm not sure if that's a lot of career things, but um, yeah, that's kind of how, how I ended up here at Hanman by way of Hazard, by way of Moorhead, by way of Hodden to Hanman. Tell Just us a uh, part of your origin uh, story. Excuse me, this is my podcast. Okay. <laughs> Tell us a part of your origin story that involves your deep love of Disney. Where did yeah. that come from? Deep I don't know. Thank you for coming to, to Sarah K. Morgan's podcast today. You know, I appreciate I, uh, your presence. You know, I do have... Um, <laughs> no, if have you want to do it. <laughs> over time, an affinity for, uh, for the mouse. And, uh, <laughs> the mouse. The mouse. Um, I don't know. It's it's kind of a thing that's that's kind of intensified over time. <laughs> yeah, we've noticed. <laughs> that's my world grows darker and closes in on me. Uh, the lot of uh, gotta get some uh, magic somewhere. Yeah, a little bit more. <laughs> the lot of that beautiful town in Central Florida beckons me. But um, I don't know. I mean, we just started. Uh, my my girlfriend Bri and I we started going a few years ago, five years ago, I don't know, six, as, and then we kind of it's kind of been an annual thing um, since twenty twenty, but um, you know, spoiler alert, I think we're going next week. So oh boy, <laughs> so we'll see. Uh, maybe maybe well something changes, but yeah, heading back, and yeah, it's been a, th- a thing. I, I love it. I love going. I think it's magical. I think it's impressive. <laughs> what Walt Disney and his team of Imagineers created. <laughs> Mm. At 1401 Flower Street. In, uh, in, wow. Um, Such yeah. a diehard. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> I am. Uh, yeah. Listen to podcasts. Well, Do you one. listen to the Hummingcast Cast on your travels to Florida? Um, I have. I think I did listen to Jenny's on my travels to Florida a few weeks ago. <laughs> What's your favorite episode? Um, My favorite episode? Well, that's uh, like picking your favorite child isn't it is it possible <laughs> yeah, it's very i think could, it's easy could you pick among those babies no mm. my parents sure <laughs> did no they did um uh, so there's been so many guests you've had i mean i always i would probably say jenny i mean i always tell jenny williams when i see her that you know i want to grow up and be like her one day because she's, she's um cool. just an inspiration all the way around but you know, you've had other go- i mean I've, i loved listening to when Re- i mean rebecca and travis are also great local people i love hearing about them yoko and 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 what she's helped build at the artisan center and anthony and his story is inspirational i mean I'm trying to think back like, who else have you had i mean always sarah kate and and kelsey <laughs> when grace was on as well you know the roommates that live in the pole house who what's not to love former <laughs> roommates now grace is now happily married and living in buckhorn so what you're yeah. saying is they're all good, and you should just if you delve think. in the 20 hours. And experience. everyone should subscribe and listen to the podcast. Yeah. 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 And where can I, I do that, Corey? <laughs> so, was, yeah, that's, the, that's sort of the origin. Awesome. Thank you, Doc. So you're now here as the Senior Director of Program yes. Development and, and implementation. implementation. The he doesn't like just develop, he implements. S, D, P, D, and I. Uh. Do we say that? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think we do. <laughs> that's what we like to say for short. <laughs> I'm not sure that that's shorter. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know. It's almost more work to remember that. <laughs> yeah. I you got to think through it. You have to really slow down and think about I it. I had to visualize <laughs> the words in my head. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, don't miss one. If you, if you said it as a word, what would it be? Oh. It's a debate. <laughs> <laughs> It rolls off the tongue. <laughs> this is the <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. So as the Esther Deba, um, <laughs> kind of give us a, uh, I guess, an overview of where we are at program- programmatically now. 
<laughs> Things have changed quite a bit over the past year or so, and uh, that's the let's, understatement. Let's, let's fi- fill us in on what's happening, where yeah, we're going. Yeah, um, it's been a it's been a year. It's been a it's been a eighteen months. It's been a two year. Is it how many years has it been? I don't know, Corey. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. A year and a half, right? Early twenty twenty. Yeah, so, so like we're getting close to two you know, years. We, I think we, before we got here, we were just saying Sarah Kate's been here basically. I mean, over a year now. So it's been almost. Yeah. She just maybe is it like thirteen months now? Mm-hmm. So Sarah Kate's been here a year, and Kelsey's been here a year, although mm-hmm. I'll be in a different role now than the prior year. Mm-hmm. Um, Jordan probably just right at a year too, right? You were just a few days before yeah. Sarah Kate. Yeah, yep, in yeah. August. I was in a few August. days after. Sarah yeah, you were like August fourteenth, August seventh, like August second or something. I've there. been here longer yeah. than yeah. any of y'all. Corey's right. been here. He right. is the uh, timekeeper down there. I'm the uh, senior here. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, <laughs> Corey's been here longer than Josh, right? Yes. Yeah, I came in 2015. Wow. Corey was a Vista, a Maricor Vista I, member. I, I started out as a groundskeeper. Oh, okay. Cutting grass. That's right. He was. Yeah. He was a Until I got my start. And then, wow, we need to hear origin. Oops. I know. Get rid of you. But Maybe that's what we'll do for our one-year episode. Let's, let's talk about us. Yeah, we need to hear Corey's <laughs> origin story. That's yeah. a... That's a rags to riches right there. Yeah, it really is. But sort it's of. been a hard. It's been a hard <laughs> year. It's been a. But it's been a good year, I think. Um, it's been hard, but the, not just because something's hard doesn't mean it can't be good or be fruitful. Yeah. So we have had some challenges over the last year. Um, a pandemic aside, like it's just been a, a, a hard year and a year of of growth and um, expansion for Hyman Settlement School, and that's. Part of the reason that my role here changed uh, to move away from fundraising to was because, as you've heard, and it's, it's, it's like saying we say the words reading core a lot. But uh, when the word when the, the settlement school received the um, um, AmeriCorps grant to begin offering 40 full time tutoring positions across um, our service area, that drastically changed the landscape here at this school. I mean, because. I want to think, and I couldn't quote the numbers, but I, th- I think we were probably at about 17 full-time staff, 17 full and part-time staff prior to that. But on a single day in um, August, like the day Kelsey came here that first day, um, we more than doubled our staff that day. I mean, we went from a place that had 17 full and part-time people to uh, over 40. And then today, I mean, we're over 50 because, you know, we've continued to grow that. We didn't quite hit our full 40 last year, which – is fine uh we hit impressive numbers of in a pandemic and served students throughout times when schools were closed so i'm proud of that work but um you know we're over 50 50 full and part-time staff today and it's uh that just drastically changes the way an organization functions um when you see how many more people the uh you know the processes you know we've had to think about um you know technology it how you know we have a lot more people here there's a lot more people that need support um and not only are there 50 full and part-time staff members you know before there was there was 17 that were largely contained here on campus with just a few folks at like Hyman elementary and car creek you know within 10 minutes of this location all of our staff was located and if you look today those 50 staff members are spread out among their you know most are well, almost you can't even say most are here anymore you know a third of the staff are actually here on campus now and then among 20 other school sites across three counties and four school districts you know if you see how far it actually would take to go from beaver probably to um Stennett elementary or to leatherwood elementary it's a it long could take time hours to drive the bre- you know you physically cannot g- see Every, I could not go to every location that we have staff at today. Jordan uh, tries to. I've tried it. He's it tried, is. despite my <laughs> efforts to say, you cannot physically get to all, um, I think it's actually 17 service sites right now because we do have a few that aren't staffed yet, but you physically can't get to them all. And that drastically changes how we, how we uh, work and how we're able to support people. So The sun rises and sets. The on sun, the, on the, scope of the, the, the sun never rises and sets on a place where we have employees working. Right? <laughs> yeah. always, it's always daylight somewhere. Where Especially when one working. of the employees spends like two weeks on a boat 
Sorry. I gotta, gotta, gotta <laughs> get away some sometime. Shade. <laughs> yeah, I just got back from a cruise. And, What's it um, like to go on vacation? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I'm going to go again next week, so I'll let you know. <laughs> He's, he couldn't figure it out the first time. He's got to keep practicing. But not to take up too much of the time, but, you know, so I'm just saying it's been a hard year, a year of growth, and Reading Corps is one of those things. But in that time as well, I mean, if we're just having, are we having real talk about how I'm in settlement school day? Is that what we're? Let's do it. Real talk. Real talk. Real talk. Is that, Real is that something talk. they said in the 90s? Am I, I, am I, am I, am I <laughs> the 90s are older? coming back, I hear. Okay. It is. Yeah. It That's is. what I heard. I think you told I'm me. Trendy. For it. It's trendy. Hit us with it. I mean, so, I mean, we just look at some of, of how things even. So, besides from Reading Corps, the settlement school has, you know, Sarah Kate came a year ago and she's done a phenomenal job. But, you know, she's new and you came in a pandemic. So, yeah. you don't even really yeah. you can talk about it more, but uh, you don't know what a normal year is like. <laughs> I'm in settlement mm-hmm. school. Um, and then, you know, Jason, who is here for a number of years as our um, director of foodways and then transitioned to a community programs uh, director role, uh, left and took a different position. So, you know, people, you know, all three of you have taken, well, now Kelsey as well, taken on different responsibilities that, that Jason uh, was working with while he was here. So that trans, Corey's position has changed. Jordan's has continued to evolve. Um, so, I mean, it's just, where we were 18 months ago is not at all where we are today. And it was during a time of immense transition organizationally uh, and leadership wise, and then transitions among each individual staff member with new people coming on and people leaving and the almost tripling or the more than doubling of the staff that we have here. And then factor that in with a global pandemic and um, school closures where most of the things that we do are in schools and then schools were not in session. And then you had all this new staff that we were trying to train and, and put out there. And we didn't, you know, one, we didn't even know what to do with them mostly <laughs> if it had been a normal year. And then now they were working from home on, you know, and this grant wasn't even designed to buy computers for everybody or have technology. They were supposed to be using flashcards and letter tiles. <laughs> <laughs> so then, you know, yeah. and all of that, we had to figure out how to keep all these programs going and then also equip people to work from, from home. I mean, you, you both worked from home remotely for a good chunk of, or all three of you worked remotely. I said four, because you also, mm-hmm. did. sometimes I forget that Kelsey, Kelsey was an AmeriCorps member, and so she was also working remotely from home during that. So, you know, those are things that we just never had to do here. Yeah. And so. I mean, not to, not to pat us on the back too much, but we, we have a very adaptable staff here, and we yeah. kind of rolled with the punches the entire time, you know? Yeah. I yeah. think it's quite amazing how much we did and how much we expanded in the midst of chaos, <laughs> really, just we all basically uncertainty and um, just a lot of different things being thrown at us. But yeah, quite honestly, like I mean, not to you know, I listen to a podcast and they always one of the one things they say every show should begin with a hearty helping of self congratulations, <laughs> <laughs> and you know perhaps that's fair because you know not that we should um, think too highly of ourselves perhaps, but. but I don't, I do think it was a good year. I mean, despite all the challenges, people rose to the occasion. Um, things that um, tutors were able to accomplish working from home in a new year was amazing. Um, how we were able to staff and build that out, I think was amazing. Sarah Kate did some, you know, how we were able to probably have more students ever do pick and bow and probably ever had before and do after school music. And it was all done virtually and she got instruments to, I mean, you know, she can tell all that story too, but I mean, she probably won't. Well, you probably do brag on yourself a little bit, (laughs) but, uh, but you know, she might not brag on herself. Oh, I can. (laughs) But you know, people did, uh, people rose to the occasion and she found ways to be in, do virtual classroom visits and make her, you know, I don't know how many times I saw her singing and playing that dulcimer in our, you know, all our offices are glass. (laughs) So (laughs) so that's the one thing fun about where we work is it's just glass everywhere. (laughs) And so you can see everything. Except me. I'm I'm in a cave. That's why I chose that office. He picked the one that had no windows in the back corner. (laughs) Lucky Corey. Yeah. I love it. But yeah, it was a good year and it was a hard year, but people rose to the occasion. And um, that's all it says. I think that's, with all those transitions, and that you know, that's um, partly why my role transitioned. So that's why I, I work now um, doing grant work. So working with Reading Corps and making sure we're meeting our objectives, and then helping staff out and um, build out our programs and make sure that we're hitting our objectives and are reaching our funding goal or our, you know our grant goals. And then um, that's the implementation the, part. That's of the this implementation, job. but mm. you know, making sure that the quality assurance is there. That you know, when we tell a funder that this is what we're going to do. 
then that we make sure we follow through on that because that's important to us. You know, how many supplements have been here 118, 19 years now? And um, we've, we, we've been here so long because we follow through and we have results. And so we have to make sure that as we continue to grow, that we have an a intense focus on m- getting the results that we say we're going to achieve and following through on that. And not that we ever wouldn't, but, you know, it's just more, when there's more people out there working it. It just takes a little more focus to make sure it happens. Awesome. Yeah. So I kind of want to get to into like how, where are we going forward? But I think before we do that, I think it'd be good to like hear from each individual about how the past year has gone for them and kind of what's going on right now. So Sarah Kate, do you want to start us off? Sure. Yeah. Um, we're moving in, you know, as the, as the pandemic stretches on the, you know, I think we're, we're getting better at virtual programming and, and at this point, you know, at the very beginning of the pandemic, we were kind of flying by the seat of our pants. Mm-hmm. But now I feel like we can really produce some quality work that meets needs and, and is realistic and, and um, <laughs> we're having a good time. Josh, okay, yeah. What is happening? Josh is going to kill me. <laughs> what? You're stealing my moment. Uh, yeah, I, was, I talked a lot. You know. <laughs> Chug it all. <laughs> Gallon a day, right? What? Gallon a day, right? Can we leave that there? Gallon a day. Uh, I tried to hold it together, but I couldn't do <laughs> it. Sorry, I was just. Don't mind mind the mind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I <laughs> Excuse me, I'm not minding my own business uh, by drinking this <laughs> tub of water. Wow. Okay, that happened. Back on. Back I knew, on I knew it was going to happen, but you I couldn't pull it together. Really? Sorry. Yours is weak. I could, I could also answer. Just, are just are you like. Sure, that's just a gallon. What is it? How many ounces are in a gallon? Sixty-four. No. 120, 128. Yeah. Whoopsies. No, <laughs> so that's probably a sixty-four <laughs> there. That's why I was a comm major. Yeah. You can just edit all this out. I went to Bible school. I think we should have a blooper. Can we have bloopers at the end of the video? Math isn't real. That's true. (laughs) Okay, Sarah Kate, get us back on track. You ask the question again. (laughs) You assume that I remember the question. How this past year has been and what's going on now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What she said. Oh, okay. (laughs) Sorry, I was going to say. My brain is empty. It's been wiped, the memory. It got too close to a magnet. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, this past year has been, has been really joyful because it, it's been just a process of most of my work has been, you know, part of my work is, is implementing programs and making stuff happen and, 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 and uh, you know, providing services that are based around art and music uh, for families. But I think a lot of my work this past year has just been settling into the community and, 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 um, and building relationships. And, you know, if you want to stick with it for a long time, you know, in, in this kind of work, the, the real kind of work, I think, happens after four o'clock you know it it happens when you you know live and operate within the community and let people know that you're here and you're just you're 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 you enjoy being here and and want to invest in in this place because you enjoy being here and you love the place um so it's it's just been real joyful getting to know making lots of new friends and it's it's um it's been really lovely it's been really lovely last year we we um we had a lot of great virtual programming and as the pandemic unfortunately stretches on uh we're going to move forward with more virtual programming this year um pick and bow is coming up we've got uh some some fun uh art after school art programs we're going to be doing a virtual family painting night that uh encourages uh uh, intergenerational uh learning together where we where moms and dads and brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and grandma and grandpa can gather together and, and paint together um, in a safe way. Um, we'll also, we're also having a, uh, a Christmas quilt after school uh, uh, virtual class taught by Jen Noble coming up in November um, where you'll be, you know, we're sending out these art kits, kits of, of fabric and everything you need to put together a little Christmas quilt and the sending out virtual uh, paint kits. So, you know, uh, I think I'm, I feel like I'm getting better at implementing virtual programs and figuring out what didn't work and how can we improve it how can we be more realistic and 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 pragmatic and 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 get the best quality work we can get done you know during this this hard time and it's 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 nice to be part of an organization like Heinemann that allows you to try to try stuff 
because you don't know if it's going to work until you try it. And I, and, and I, I feel really lucky to have, you know, somebody like Josh that lets me try stuff, <laughs> you know, and sometimes it doesn't work and that's okay. You know, and sometimes it, it, it exceeds your expectations. And that just comes from that, that sort of culture comes from a workplace that, that prioritizes, uh, uh, growth and prioritizes, um, uh, trying new things, even though it's a risk, you mm. know, especially in nonprofit kind of work. Nothing like a good risk. <laughs> <laughs> you love it, don't you? I do love a risk. <laughs> what about what about you, Kelsey? What what have you got going on right now? What's coming down the pipeline? Yeah, totally. So um, I when did I? So after summer school mm-hmm. at the end, when did that end? July, end of July, July fifteenth or fourteenth? Yeah, uh, yeah. 15th. And then I took a very much needed two week vacation <laughs> and then came back into my new position. Oh, I'm sorry to say, Kelsey can take a two week vacation and nobody gives her any. <laughs> no, I was, I was like. Listen, mm. I'm an AmeriCorps <laughs> member and it's all based on hours. I'm still we waiting on my two week vacation. We know this reality. She didn't so much take a vacation, so she completed her contract. Thank you. <laughs> she was done. Thank she was you. Done. Um, and then I jumped in to my new role as the community agriculture support coordinator. So I'm in charge of the of coordinating the Grow Appalachia programs uh, through the Hindman Settlement School as a site. So we are in Perry and Knott counties and also a market manager for the Knott County Farmers Market down here on the um, settlement school fields. So those are the two things that are in my wheelhouse here in my position at the settlement school. And well, this year has been like Sarah like Sarah said, a lot of getting to know the community and my role as a reading tutor definitely helped that year and this past year has definitely helped to to make me feel at home in the community and get to know the community here um, and help me to do my job better now as community agriculture support coordinator. Uh, so right now with Grow Appalachia, I'm just trying to figure out the best way to end this season strong. Uh, the season will end in November because, you know, COVID numbers have gone up. We were able to do one in-person but outside uh, gathering to talk about some, to do some workshop things and just come together and talk about our growing season. I think that was maybe through, when was that, two weeks ago, three weeks? No, that was a long time ago, <laughs> a month ago. <laughs> um, but COVID has gotten worse since then, so I'm trying to figure out how to do things like food preservation um classes and how to best reach my my participants right now which has been really hard because a number of them you know don't have a laptop or are only able to access uh you know zoom meetings and things from their phones and aren't sure how to do it and so it's i'm really right now focusing on how best to reach participants and make sure that everyone is included and engaged um and that has been hard but it's a work in progress, and I'm looking forward to, you know, fin- like I said, finishing the season strong and really preparing for next season. And for farmers market, we the season is is slowing down, uh, produce wise, but we still we have our Tuesday markets. I believe our Friday markets are going to end um, very soon, and we're just going to have our Tuesday markets from four to six. But, you know, just being there for our vendors, for our growers is really important. Like they still need that that arena to sell. And um, sometimes it's hit and miss with getting vendors right now. But, you know, we're doing the best we can. And so we still have our markets going. And um, again, we got that grant from the Department of Agriculture. So really mm-hmm. looking forward and and buying the things that our vendors, our farmers need in order to have the most successful market possible. So really my eyes are trained on the future and look and planning for next year and making it, you know, just like great, great, great year for mm-hmm. our Grow Appalachia and, and market. So well, one th- oh, I was going to say one thing about Kelsey is that since she has, and since I bragged on Sarah Kate, <laughs> I would say Kelsey, because it, it, what sparked it was when you said about how the relationships were just so important and um, yeah. like one thing that everyone, when, every time I've, Somebody maybe who doesn't know Kelsey's name yet, because she's kind of new to this role. Mm-hmm. Uh, they always just say about 
Now remind me who was who is that girl that was so friendly and was just <laughs> like, that knows everybody's like, they may not know her name or I will, but, like, they, but she knows everybody's name. <laughs> that real tall girl. That real tall girl. Yeah. That's all so the way up nice. There. <laughs> My name memory is pretty good and that has helped me a lot. <laughs> but you know, Ever- Kelsey is quite uh, adept at knowing names and like being so nice, which is so like it's so important in these kind of roles where yeah. you know at a community nonprofit like this where you. It's all about making connections with people and um, and building their trust and growing that. Without those connections, you have nothing. Absolutely. I mean, and so it's just, yeah. you know, even that short time that you've been doing this, she's built so much trust and goodwill and like uh, yeah. among farmers and market participants and Garofalacha <laughs> families and I mean, reading and children and families as well, mm-hmm. in the prior role, but just moving ahead. Yeah. It's just, um, you know. I mean, that's really what I see my role as, as like this bridge between the settlement school and the resources that we have here and in the local community. And so like as soon as I started this with Grow App, I was like, OK, I'm going to go to, to these growers in their gardens and help them with, you know, these services that they weren't able to have in these couple months when the settlement school was in transition. And so my my priority was jumping right in there, getting to know everyone, building those relationships and that trust and letting them know that I was here to help them with whatever they needed. So, so two things. I did have a very clean transition, but now we're just going to get down and dirty with it. And Sarah Kett, are we not entertaining enough since oh, you got on your phone? Wow. Put you on blast. Oh, oh. You know, we, we do have jobs. Sorry, <laughs> like, <God. laughs> yeah, I definitely wasn't doing my job, but business. <laughs> we'll call it that. Business, business. Business, business. business. Numbers, business. numbers, numbers. Numbers, numbers, numbers. numbers, numbers business. Is working? Okay, um, but uh, so you you kind of touched on this a little bit. So uh, where do you where do you think you your program is in the future? Uh, anyone can start if you get if you get the notion. But uh, where do you see what do you see what do you see yourself doing? I'll say one thing right, right off is today I was working on you know well we finished the one real thing that we got to have on campus in the last eighteen months was we had the Appalachian Writers Workshop yeah. and. Um, which it, it just fell in that little sweet spot of yeah, a window mm-hmm. where like we were just committed to like having an in-person event and it wasn't, um, it wasn't too, it was getting a little bit like, it eh. wasn't dangerous <laughs> at that point. I don't guess maybe, <laughs> maybe it was. And we were just blind to it in yes. the moment, but like we had the event and, and it was, and, it, and, and it was nobody here. got sick as a result. Nobody, yeah. To my yeah. knowledge, yeah. every, th- we were not the source of a super spreader. Event. <laughs> <laughs> and if you do know if that we were, I wish you would just keep that to yourself. <laughs> 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 tell me because because <laughs> it's, Five weeks have passed at this point, and <laughs> we don't need to know it anymore. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, one thing that came out of that was a conversation um, that we had with uh, many people. One of them, uh, Robert Goff, who's an author and was on faculty this year, is, you know, we felt like that we were not, um, you know, that one, that we want to make sure the Writers' Workshop stays y- young and, or not really say young, but is always fresh and is always has a, a, a newer, younger audience that's always coming in because it's, you got to have that that uh, intergenerational aspect of that's what makes it so successful and wonderful mm-hmm. through the years, you know. And we want to make sure that that happens. So we got talking about how we could um, grow that. And so we've been working on a concept uh, since about having a young writers workshop. And I think we're you know not like breaking news because you know there's always I mean it's, it's not funded yet. We have some thoughts and but you know we're working on that. And so I think we want to see how we can support young writers, um, high school students. But then also, you know, college age as well. And that's not really what the Young Writers Workshop would be about. But but also find ways to continue to engage younger artists as well. So I hope that um, as of now, uh, among my work with, you know, helping shepherd many of these programs or, or at least helping Sarah Kate when she needs it and trying to – is one thing I, I do coordinate is, is some aspects of our literary programs. And so I've, that's one thing I'm super excited about is to see how that – could grow and how we could you know help students find their voice and to build that next generation of Appalachian storytellers that that you know can define what it is to be here in their own words and not let some other group not let people you know too many times you let people not from here define what you are or or they get to build the narrative I mean it's 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 these students it's these people that live here that are from here that call this place home that's that's who needs to be building that story. That's who this is all about. It's not about um, what 
anyone thinks or what the media should, you know, I don't hate saying that like the media, but like, it's not what the media <laughs> wants to portray. It's not what J.D. Vance gets to decide is Appalachia. It's what people who live here and who grew up here and know what it's like. And so those kids need to know how to tell their story. And so, and then we want them to have a pipeline to come to the grown up, the adult writers workshop, uh, you know, later mm-hmm. and then grow. And whether it's a full time career for them or whether it's just something they do as a passion, you know, we want to support them. So that's one thing I'm super excited about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Reading Core is going to grow. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just continue to have more and more mm-hmm. schools and, stu- and students served. And that's wonderful too, because then children are. Or mm-hmm. reading on grade level and getting the support they need. But yeah, and I guess we could talk about dyslexia. But our next episode will actually be with two of our tutors. So I'm just gonna touch real yeah, quick. Yeah, you can touch real quick. Every county happening. in the ARC. That's my that's my long term goal. Go. Oh wow! <laughs> and the ARC or the Kentucky ARC? <laughs> the Kentucky ARC. <laughs> okay, oh, okay. Okay. I mean that's still a lot. I'm not uh, going up. Uh, I'm, gonna say. <laughs> I'm not going, no, we're not. Not going not up or down. I'm staying. <laughs> vertical movement. Right there. Say, uh, from New York <laughs> to Alabama. <laughs> 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 that would be a long, long tor- term yeah. goal. The ARC, for those that may not know, is the Appalachian Regional Commission. So there's counties defined as mm-hmm. Appalachian counties. Is that How far out does that expand? Is From Pike County to Hart County. Is it 54 Hart in County. Kentucky? I don't know off the top of my head, but 50 ish. Yeah. I really don't know where Hart County is. It's basically central Kentucky. Yeah. So I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> you do. You've got a lot of work to do. Um,. So yeah, I guess we were still we still haven't got to your all's future mm-hmm. goals and plans and aspirations. Well, I'll, I'll bounce off of what Josh said about empowering young folks to tell their own stories. I think that would be um, uh, well. It, it's a uh, it's. Let me start over. <laughs> My brain is very fuzzy. Um, bouncing off of what Josh said, um, something that I'm looking forward to doing is also empowering um, young folks to tell their stories but through the visual arts. So in the same way that the Young Writers Workshop would, would be them telling their stories about their lives, um, we're, uh, uh, we just recently received a grant from the Kentucky Colonels to purchase 10 DSLR cameras and all the accoutrement that come with that. And um, looking forward, when, when we're able to have in-person um, uh, classes, uh, we would like to start a, a, a photography mentorship program that, expand, that spans a semester long where a group of high school students are partnered up with um, with a local uh, uh, or a regional photography or a, a photographer, as multiple um, multiple folks that can come in and, and shepherd them through creating great images, not only that are, are that have artistic value but also documentary value and tell the stories of of Knott County and and um, and and takes really cool photos. Excited about that. That's awesome. Well, uh, so Corey, to ask you a question, then <laughs> your work. We are t- taking over this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> you're. I know. I don't. I don't want. I don't want Kelsey has to chime in too. But um, I feel like when you're talking about <coughs> telling a story, some some of your work now is helping tell a story as well. And so I was hoping that you might enlighten us all about some of the <laughs> stuff that you've been doing even maybe what we did yesterday that i <laughs> tagged along for and really had no business being there other than my own selfish <laughs> desires yeah so um jordan was there with us too um we're working on uh, expanding our agrilatcha program into more of a documentary style um tv series i guess you could say um where we kind of talk about the uh, foodways and um agriculture and food traditions of appalachia and try to tell in a new way that I guess we've never done before. Um, sort of more documentary, telling a story of um, different people here in the region. Um, so yesterday we went and talked to, uh, I think her name was Nandy. 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 And, uh, like a nyeh sound. Nandy. Yeah, so. I've never been fed so many figs, fresh <laughs> figs in <laughs> yeah. my life. So she is this awesome lady uh, who lives in Perry County, um, doesn't speak a, or speak a bit of English, uh, just Mandarin. Yeah, Mandarin originally from China, I think. Um, so um, she has had this amazing garden going on there in her her front yard, overtaking everything near the Perry County Park pretty much at the <laughs> entrance there. It is impressive. Yes, it is, it is a sight to behold. And uh, so we're, we're going around with people like that in the community um, and, and, and trying to paint a picture of what um, – Foodways is in, in Appalachia and um, agriculture and food traditions that we have there. So I know I think I saw see this because we do great here in picking up our garbage from one episode <laughs> to the next. 
Or I think this is literally like a, uh, a look at what some that's going to be. Because yeah, this is what you and Jenny were like dreaming up when you were talking yeah. about so it. But, beautiful. but yeah, yeah, Nandy. Yeah, she's right here on the Chinese. And then, of course, there's like Hispanic um, influence on farmers and Middle Eastern fo uh, folks that live in the region. And um, the whole maybe even look at like ARH or local health care system and how like um, the Indian food history that yeah. how doctors and, and folks that come in through we ARH. We talked about that on the last podcast, how I would love for an Indian restaurant to be in the region. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're looking at different. I think it, it'll have different sort of themes each season. Uh, so I think this season, the first season, we're kind of focusing on um, different cultures um, that have that have come to Appalachia um, through migration and that sort of thing and kind of how they are. T they're looking at Appalachian food and ha what they're doing with their traditions and c how that sort of combines and makes um, Appalachian foodways as we know it now. And yeah. yeah, I didn't, I didn't really know the the depths of of what was yeah. occurring and what had occurred. Um, you know, when we was we was interviewing the lady um, from the you know Nandy, yeah. uh, somebody else was saying there's a Vietnamese family right over the river there that's basically doing the same thing and. and yeah. mm -hmm. And then the whole history of the ARH hospital. Um, from the I should say, when we were at the international dinner a few days before, I mean, we you t we talked with a lady who was a refugee from Hunga uh, uh, Hungary, Hungarian refugee yeah, Hungarian who came refugee. here in the 50s, maybe. Yeah. And so she was, you know, she had made a baklava and maybe a kraut she, for, yeah, that she shared at this international yeah. dinner. And we interviewed a Filipino family as well that was there. Um, I would say that's yeah. something that's kind of like sad is that these people have been written out of, the, out of the narrative and this is kind of like an opportunity for us to kind of like bring them back and give them a platform in and Appalachia. I, yeah, and I think the whole idea, I mean, one of my goals, I mean, it's it's Corey and Jenny's uh, baby and I'm just here to, like I said, I just want to meet some cool people that <laughs> I, uh, and have some figs in her front yard and see, <laughs> yeah. the, the cool oh God, yeah, see how she's growing rice, rice down the <laughs> riverbank. Is, um, oh, it's amazing. It's, it's impressive, but it's just, I hope that through that, as, as people see some of these things that you're producing and these, the, you know, through podcast or through video, through Agrilatcha or what's cooking now or, and whatever else what we end up, you know, through video dance units <coughs> that you and Sarah Kate are going to do, like all these different things. I hope people can see the diversity that is here. Um, you know, perhaps not all, I mean, it's not, uh, as we know, it's not super racially diverse here in Knott County or Perry County uh, in terms of just like percentages when you look at it, but there are some fantastic stories like, you know, Nandy being one, I mean, and what, what her grandson Nate and the restaurant they own and, you know, how just so generous that they are with their time. And, you know, th they told the story that when the pandemic started and they had to close down China King there in Hazard that, you know, they, Nate and his family just opened up the freezers and just gave away all the perishable food because mm -hmm. they just, you know, um, you know, just uh, they have generous hearts. And like even yesterday, I mean, she was giving so much. I don't even know what half the vegetables were that she was growing <laughs> because they're not <laughs> always things you see here. Uh, yeah. But I mean, she was just like, you know, go, go get your uh, <laughs> go get one of those. And then you just uh, she didn't say that, obviously, she just said go. But but you would just like she would just load you up with like this large cucumber looking thing i don't know what it was <laughs> and uh, very bitter exciting. melons or bitter something. melon right <laughs> <laughs> that was the round thing it was like this long was or was the bitter was melon the long melon, tube yeah. thing i don't pretty know sure it was. There were, everything was a bitter melon at that point <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't know it was a I can't, I can't say the latin cucumbent okay type of <laughs> vegetable <laughs> i'm not sure but you know just all the different things she was growing. I, I hope people can see the diversity of like you know that there is um there are wonderful stories and diverse traditions and and families here that have contributed to what makes um appalachia such a special place mm -hmm. and that they can see that you know um and I, I think that's what you'll you'll see in that but you'll also see that that and how it's influenced the things we grow here and the food that we eat and mm -hmm. the dances and the music and all of it you know appalachia is just, just wonderful you know america is just a blending pot but i think appalachia is Maybe like a hyper focused version of that, where it's um, super rich in culture that lots of places don't have. Yeah, and I'm excited about what's cooking now coming up as well, and just all the different guests and things that we're going to do with that, and how that will also sort of 
I mean, anytime Jenny Williams talks, <laughs> there's there's gold coming out of her mouth, and um, you know, building that, discussing the culture, building the culture of our food traditions and that sort of thing. And I guess that's kind of where our food waste program, in a way, is kind of gearing towards is telling the story and communicating it in different ways and um, helping local growers as we have been through the Grow Appalachia program to to um, grow the best they can and still growing things in our greenhouses and our gardens around here. Um, well, I think that's good because that's probably where, you know, if we're being honest with ourselves, uh, we probably, you know, Grappalatch is a wonderful thing that we've been doing for a number of years, and we're so grateful for Berea College and that partnership um, and, you know, the, the work that you've done in growing things. But probably where we have um, fallen short some in our work and, and food ways is probably in, in telling the story. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, of course, we have events, we have dumplings and dancing that we're sad that we're not going to get to have this year. That's true. Um, but, you know, Agrilatcha and what's cooking now is a, is a great step forward to say, you know, here's the work that we were doing, but here's how we also can tell the story of others and what they're producing and what they're growing and what they're eating and how all that has um, contributes to, to this place we call home and what makes Appalachia special. So... Hopefully, I think that's where we may have fallen short is we didn't always tell the story super well. We were so we were a little more focused on the technical side about helping, which food insecurity is a major thing. And, you know, maybe this might be a good segue for Kelsey, but, mm -hmm. you know, that could be. But now this is a chance for us to say, um, well, here's here's what here's what makes up Appalachian food and Appalachian agriculture. And here's where that intersects with its culture and why it's important. So it's mm -hmm. fun. It's, I'm, I'm looking forward to the next. Yeah. These six episodes that'll come out hopefully <laughs> next year, and then yeah. the next twelve or fourteen episodes of What's Cooking Now. That this, that we are grateful that the Kentucky Humanities Council has helped us, uh, not helped us, um, has funded. Funded. Uh, I won't say help fund. <laughs> Entirely funded. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're grateful for Bill Goodman and his team for the, for that support as well. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of where the foodways aspect of things are. And mm -hmm. I don't know, did we get to your sort of future? Yeah, what, what, yeah you, you said you're really excited about planning for next year. So what, is, what, is, what are some details of that? Well, so this was our first year where, where Grow Appalachia had expanded into Perry County. So really wanting to focus on the Perry County participants and, and getting them roped in, into, you know, well, what is Grow Appalachia and how does it work? And, and getting them really engaged uh, and getting more folks to sign up. Um, in the Perry County and just spreading the word about Grow Appalachia throughout Perry County in particular, mm -hmm. because there, I mean, there are a lot of not County participants, um, but I really also would like to expand it into, um, into folks like there is a large like Latinx community in not County and Perry County. And I would love to, um, to, to reach out and to see if, you know, if there are folks who are interested in Grow Appalachia and that sort of intercultural learning that can happen. Um, amongst our community members here in both not and Perry. Mm. So that would be really, that would be really, really cool. Um, uh, as opposed, so then there's growing, expanding grow app and we'll have to see what happens next year with COVID. Um, you know, I'm still learning how grow app works and trying to figure out uh, next year if we're able to do in-person gatherings and workshops and that sort of thing. Um, so for grow app, expanding it, and also for farmers market, um, expanding it, you know, with the with this grant money that we got from KDA, and focusing on the farmers market being a an event for our community. You know, it's it's not just for the farmers and who want to who sell their produce and for the folks who need to buy their produce, but as a gathering place for us to come together. So Sarah and I have been t uh, brainstorming it in ways that we can really focus on making these events. Uh, collaborating with, you know, what we're called Tuesdays on Troublesome. We might work the name a little bit, but having these events that, you know, offer music and food and, and crafts, there's been a really great relationship growing with the Appalachian Artisan Center. Um, I volunteer there and, ha and also give free classes for the community, free art classes for families. And Grow App has also collaborated with the this new garden under the 
infamous Heinemann mail Mailbox horse. horse. <laughs> yes, the mail horse that is down downtown. I love it. <laughs> I really do. I know it's controversial. You know, it. It, the history is incredible. Like the last mail, like horse. What yes. would you? I will say. Horse, okay. Mail Fun carrier. Fact, every time somebody criticizes the mailbox horse, <laughs> yes, or perhaps <laughs> even the anvil in no. Red Fox, I, I always like to remind folks. I was the executive director of the Appalachian Arts Center. I was on the team that wrote that grant. <laughs> We're going to be nice to you. So this is the culmination of a project I worked on. And, uh, yeah. yeah. I do love the mailbox horse. I would say and, and now. It is probably horse. the least appreciated piece of art in Kentucky. Well, people don't. <laughs> people <laughs> The thing is, like, people don't know what it's for, what it means. And so we're really excited. We just put in the garden and grow up. You know, I was able to work with Yoko. And when Jason was still here, he gave some he gave a lot of advice and donated some of the compost that we had that we had bought for our participants. Um, So donating that and um, t- planning for the spring and making it sort of thinking about how it could also be a community garden. So grow up. It's been very fortunate that this collaboration has been able to was able to begin and then continue uh, as I move into the position here. And it's just, I mean, it looks great now. And yeah. uh, a sign is getting ready to be put up. So we have our one our one flower bed that's going to have, that's actually there just for the sign that explains the history. So hopefully with this... Yes. <laughs> With this sign that explains it, people will appreciate the uh, the male horse now. But I can't remember his name. But, but for those that don't know, I, know, I, I, I probably oh, kind of interrupted you. But that's he right. was the last uh, horseback male carrier yes. in the United States. Was, was in Cary or not Harry in Pippa Passes? No, what's it over in, in Knott County? It wasn't necessarily here in Hanman, but it was in Knott County, and so. There was a PBS nice. special. There was a whole documentary yeah. thing. I mean, oh, there was Sesame on. Street episodes? Yeah, there was a Sesame Street episode. Yes. Oh, wow. I think he was on yeah. it, maybe. So, I mean, there's... Didn't know that. Yeah, so that's wow. the reason. It's very cool. That, <laughs> I'm sorry cool. that we're trying to have culture. <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> we're trying to appreciate our history. Sorry you we're know? trying to... Josh is a little bit burnt about this. Listen, I'm also I'm right burnt. there with you. I'm right there with you. I, I think mean, it's cool. There's even a little sitting area. People can sit in the garden. And now I don't know if y'all have seen it, but it's beautiful. It yes. is. We it have, is. and we. I was able to use one of my art classes to get um, some kids who come to my art classes, and we planted the garden. You know, we had our clients with the Culture of Recovery program at the Arson Center come and help us. So it's just a lot of wonderful collaboration that is focusing on getting the local community involved, and and excited about what we're doing. And also, like you all have been talking about, focusing on on their stories and mm-hmm. on their knowledge bases. And I think that that's something that I want to focus on moving forward and grow up is really, you know, I'm coming in with and I'm supposed to be giving these food preservation workshops. Right. But all of my participants, almost all of them have much more knowledge <laughs> and so much more to give on food mm-hmm. preservation or on season yeah. extension. So let them teach. And, yeah. yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Or on seed saving. And so what I would really love is and I mean, we have such a history here of, you know, an, of like indigenous food ways and, and black food ways and European food ways coming in to Appalachia. And it would just be really awesome to embody all of that next year. And, really have people focusing on mm-hmm. and really appreciating and and knowing that what they know and what they have to offer is crucial is important and that that is what should be lifted up for sure. yeah, i mean that's to go i know we're probably running long but I, I, you know when you, you well, the day. way you said that right then is i, I go back to like the history of Hammond settlement school when you look at what St- stone and pet what mason and Catherine pettit when they came here one was quoted, and I can't remember right now which, whether it was May or Catherine. One said, we came here to learn all we can and to teach all we can. I mean, they knew when they came to Hunman as outsiders, as folks who were here to um, educate um, the, the students, that they had just as much to learn, um, which is a wonderful, mm-hmm. wonderful perspective mm-hmm. to have, is that, you know, there are people and that can probably teach um, a, uh, a canon class far better Th- than you, yes. and no yes. offense to you, but oh, like none been taken. doing it none for taken. decades and decades. Yeah. And so, you know, that's the wonderful thing about that is the perspective that you can have or that we can have of, you know, we're here to help support these folks, but we also can realize that perhaps they can teach us or teach each other. If we equip them with the tools and resources needed, um, they can be that um, that expert in the room Yes, and can be that peer leader and, 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 and mm-hmm. knowledge base. 
Yeah, so absolutely. For sure. So we're getting very long in this podcast. Yeah, and I need uh, to eat lunch. Y'all. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're going to have to edit several hours Take all that. We do very little <laughs> editing. Yeah. Well, well, there's five minutes the less work, the better. What's next? Chuck and Walter. What's next? I'm, sorry. I'm so getting yeah, a little we're gonna, hangry. We're going to hit so straight okay. to the lightning yeah. round. Okay. Let's oh, gosh. Let's go. Okay. I'm ready. Get lunch. I, I apologize. Do you know so how many sorry. levels Hero changes pizza. they have to do? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mostly it's turning into the microphone. <laughs> I'm ready. What do you want? What do you What's the lightning round? Oh, they just ask real questions, or questions real fast. Okay. <laughs> or other questions were real. Wait, like real. As a, to us as a group or well, individually? How's that go? It's going to be all of you, yeah. If all right. Whoever answers first wins. We don't okay. get buzzers? Where's the buzzers? No, we don't have buzzers. Jeopardy? No, we just have to yell. It's podcast. We have to yell over Start each it, other. Corey. All right, go on, y'all. What's the best trip you've ever had? Off Disney World. <laughs> 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 which, which of the thousand trips Easy you take question. to Disney World was the best? Oh, best trip well, I ever had? Hard. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> my next one is always my best. Oh, gosh. Uh, oh, my although, God. Although there was oh, one in the December 2019 <laughs> that was pretty lit. <laughs> <laughs> pretty lit. <laughs> That's mm. uh, true. I think my best trip was uh, was the turkey. The I turkey. Oh, two turkey. I, said, turkey. I thought you said the turkey. Oh, I just said oh. the turkey. <laughs> the turkey. <laughs> the turkey. Like, Explain. No, no. It's the cool. turkey. Yeah, it was very cool. Uh, the cool. best trip I ever took uh, was to Wales. Awesome. Yeah, I love um, Wales. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone yeah. going going abroad. I feel so. Yeah, it was like I went to Florida. <laughs> first it was family. only first of all, Disney World is not abroad. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You went I on a cruise to Aruba. I'm so I did. I did. I did go my to second <laughs> my second best trip I ever took was over to Mountain Motorsports Park in Iceland. <laughs> 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 Demolition Derby. Go. I've been there many times. <laughs> so Magical fun. place. We love it. All right, what's next? All right, I'll hit the next one. Go Where's the best it. place to eat in the region? That can be anywhere. Eat what? The eat the in the Wrigley, region. Wrigley, duh. Well, eat in the region. I think we have to say the Wrigley is, of course, the so best. Good. But aside from the Wrigley, can we not do another oh. besides the Wrigley? The double quick in Hanman. What? Best pizza rolls around. I mean, no. yes. <laughs> well, I mean, first of all, if you're talking about the best gas station food, that is obviously uh, what was formerly known as Dean's Stop and Go. <laughs> okay, all right. No, it's the Dean's Stop and Go <laughs> is the best Stop gas station food. I heard, well, sh- I heard shenanigans is uh, pretty good. Shenanigans is, is, great. is delicious like and hazard. you got to stop by shenanigans. But For sure. But if you're going old school, you have to go to the Circle T and Hazard. The oh. Circle T... Is where it's yeah. I need you to stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you're, if you're mad I'm because you're hungry now, you can just go. <laughs> I, am, I'm a, I am getting hangry. I apologize. I just I think to enjoy Circle T, you have to have a connection, like a history. Yeah, I mean, with it. And I don't. <laughs> You so have to have I'm a yeah, relationship with, with I, the place. Yes. Then and you I need to go build, cultivate that relationship you're so good at. <laughs> <laughs> so to prevent a war from going, from next happening one, right next now. One, next one, next one, next one. Go, no, go, 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 go. I mean, I got mine. I, got, I'm going to throw mine in there. Tim Coucher Shell in Leslie County. What? So Tim Coucher Shell. Oh, yeah. wow. Tim Coucher's Shell. Yeah, his Shell Mart. Nice. Oh, that's he's, like, he's got a he's got a Grippo pizza that is to die for. Ever, <laughs> is it ever, the ever Brothers? Gas, ever gas station? Oh God, yeah. Oh, no. So I can get no, that. He, no, I no, can, he makes yeah. it. He makes it there. It's a pizza shop. <laughs> I love how you throw the quotes. <laughs> Hard quotation. <laughs> it's a Hunt Brothers pizza. Let's uh, be real. I'll say. Who are the Hunt Brothers? May the Bond pizza. May it rest <laughs> in peace. The Mini Mall restaurant. Just oh. This is, that's one of those things I had an emotional Aww. attachment to that is no more. I do miss that popcorn I gave you. Yeah, that's where right else can you go in the world that gives you popcorn when, when you sit that down? Close. Um, you can go to the it's gym. <laughs> the sports bike. That's not. I went sports bikes in the Boston. But, but you're not going right. to eat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a COVID casualty. Yeah, it died. Oh, sad. So sad day. Is there another lightning? Mexican restaurant. Yep. One more. If you were a pirate ship captain, oh, what would yes. be the name of your ship? Oh, so good. The name I re- of my ship. Can I share this little fun story? I recently found out that my name, Kelsey Clunin, basically means a pirate. Because <laughs> Clunin, Clunin comes from the Irish name meaning rogue. There was a, like this old clan chief who was called, th- I can't, I don't know how to pronounce it, but the Irish name for rogue. And that's where Clunin comes from. And Kelsey means from the sea or from the island. Wow. So I'm basically a pirate wow. in my name. So what's your ship name? Just, just Kelsey. I think just the Kelsey. Kelsey. The Kelsey. The, the Kelsey. <gasps> oh, no. Something with Rose, because that's my middle name. Oh, so that's I'm going to say, like. Sorry, I've lost interest. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's fine. I was in my oh, own world. 
included. You were all like, oh, that is cute. Oh, my God. The rose, the... Uh, something. The something. <laughs> but it's got to be also, like, don't mess with me. Yeah. You know? It can't just the be... The prickly rose. Ooh, that uh, that the sounds... The prickly pear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. S- oh no! <laughs> I've got it. I'm gonna steal. It's going to be the black rose. Wow! Oh. But from from the Thin Lizzy song, the Rose and De, which means black rose. Also, <laughs> I got it. I see Perfect. it. I see everything. You already have a vision in place. Thank you for thank you for that question. What about you, Sarah? Hey, what's your? Mine's too. gonna be I called. Know. The slippery eel. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I Moving love on, it. Josh. What's yours gonna be called? <laughs> I am anti-pirate. <laughs> I am. Boo. Anti-pirate. <laughs> that, no that ride, the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, the Disney's pretty cruise. lit, though. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mine will be on oh, the uh, Celebrity Equinox. <laughs> that, is, that is most recent shit I was on. Uh, <laughs> that sounds like a car. Isn't the Equinox a car? It is, but that's a Chevy Equinox. <laughs> if you, if you throw it into the car. water, it's <laughs> 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 like one of those little, like the foam things uh, in the water. I feel, like, I feel like you're leading me to say something about Disney here. I don't know. What was Jack Sparrow's ship? What was it? The, the Black, the Black Pearl. Pearl. The Black Pearl. The Black Pearl. I don't see. I don't know. No, no, no. Uh, I I, no, I think you were a, you're, a, you're, you're built for a cruise ship. I am more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm me. The carnival. <laughs> we, me got to we plunder. Got. I'm 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 built for built for lounging. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Same. Kelsey's meant. built for lounging. And me no, and you would just go watch it. There, there will be no net climbing or <laughs> land ahoy. <laughs> I will be in my stateroom. <laughs> no no land ahoying. So no boring. Land ahoying. <laughs> okay. That was wow. fun. Can we go eat lunch now? Well, <laughs> here's one thing that I want to do before we finish out. That way it saves me and Jordan the the, <coughs> the process. Since everybody that would give us this information is here, okay. give us your announcement that needs to be <gasps> oh, sure. that yeah. needs to be oh, put boy. out this week. And jo- Josh will give us some donors, so you got uh, you got a minute aspect? to figure that out. God, there's no Wi Fi up here. Connect to my phone. I'll t- I'll make a hotspot. I can I can go ahead while you're finding your go yeah, have go at for it. it. Sorry, I was not uh, I was at that point I, I was not told to have this in advance. Oh, it just came to my mind. So, go okay, ahead, Kelsey. So, farmers market is still a happening, still a bustling, and we, our farmers markets are going to be Tuesdays, four to six. As of now, th- we still have our Fridays, ten a.m. to to noon, but um, those will probably just change to just having Tuesdays from four to six p.m. down there at the pavilion below the Knott County uh, Public Library. And uh, if you are interested in Grow Appalachia. Please reach out to me. You can call the office phone or email me at Kelsey dot K E L S E Y dot Clunan C L O O N A N at Hyman dot org. And please let me know if you're interested in Grow App. Um, oh, also free art classes Thursday evenings from five to six thirty at the Appalachian Artisan Center. Um, and we also have at the same time free ceramics for adults. So if you've ever wanted to learn ceramics, no experience needed. You can learn how to throw on the wheel, do any piece pottery. It's so much fun and bring your youngins and they can come and do crafts with me. Sounds like a fun time. Mm-hmm. It's very fun. Me? Yes. Um, coming up starting October 5th, we have a virtual family painting night. Um, you have to register by September 28th. Um, it's ten dollars per kit. Um, we ask you because this is a family painting night. We ask you that at least two people from your household sign up, but that can be two siblings or friends, cousins, grandma, grandpa, anybody. And you you can define family however it means, however that whatever that means to you. And and uh, if you uh, we do have a, a limited number of scholarships available. So if you go to hyman.org/events, you can click on family painting night and it has all the information, and you can find out how to apply for a scholarship. Um, you can also go to hyman.org slash events um, and uh, find out information about our upcoming Christmas quilt after school class that will be starting in November. Um, yeah, it's a grand old time. Awesome. And I will announce our uh, up- upcoming classes for the Makery. Um, we actually have one start today that was Karen McElmurray's class, Riding Wonder. Um, so it's too late on that, but you could still register for. <laughs> 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 Sorry, we're going to tell you about it. But <laughs> starting on a bummer. Me, so know. if you have some FOMO, you shouldn't miss the next one. <laughs> <laughs> so the next class is uh, 
uh, Jane Waters, Building a Riding Life, How and Where to Start. And that will start on October 4th. So you got three weeks or so to get registered for that. And then after that, Marianne Worthington's class, The Voice of the Poem, uh, that will begin on October 25th. And also on October 7th, we'll be having uh, Marianne here on campus doing a virtual um, reading, or not reading, but a study discussion of Crystal Wilkinson's The Birds of Opulence. So you can check that out. You can register for all these things at hymandmakery.org. We have our own website for that one. So, Josh. There are um, lots of wonderful donors we could thank, uh, but I think I would like to, since um, I'd like to just shout out some folks who, who have sponsored Day at the Races. And I think you may have done a few the last time, but um, the Hyman Day at the Races, is uh, we didn't get to have it last year because Keeneland was closed to her the fall meet, but it's one of our signature fundraising events. Um, it is October 21st. I think we have 20 tickets left in our in our block, which is um, not many. So if you're interested in going, I would encourage you to go over to hyman.org slash races, and you can um, sign up. But we do have so many wonderful sponsors, Appalachian Wireless, ARH, uh, Blue Ridge Insurance, and uh, Central Bank, uh, Lewis Brothers General Contractors, the Georgia State Society, the Daughters of the American Revolution, uh, the Lark Group, Brand Advertising Group, uh, Unified Trust, uh, Stockyards Bank and Trust, uh, Lee Smith, and our presenting sponsor. We could not do this event um, every year if it were not for um, our wonderful presenting sponsor, Forked Bank. Um, they have been so generous to the school throughout the years, and uh, we are grateful for Terry Forked and his uh, his whole team, um, and Tucker Bollinger and Eddie Woodruff and, and the whole team at Forked that support uh, work here at Hyman. So thank you to our presenting sponsor, Forked Bank, and the, all the other wonderful sponsors as well that I mentioned. But if you're interested in going, please head over to hyman.org slash racist, sign up, come join us on October 21st. Um, as far as we know, the event is happening. I mean, awesome. we're going to be there unless they tell us, but you'd have, to, you'd have to put up a big stick to keep us out of that place. So <laughs> <laughs> that's all I know is that you'd, you'd have to close the doors to keep us from seeing the, keep seeing a, the horses it'll go. Keep a, a herd of stampeding horses couldn't keep me away. <laughs> that's true. We, it would take it, a... Because it it's a Keeneland. It's Keeneland. Yeah, uh, <laughs> Thank you and good night. This is the end of my podcast. <laughs> Thanks for that's coming. Great. I that will is say, true. You, you missed a very important <laughs> question <laughs> on here. What that, was that, Josh? That you should say, what do you love about, about your work? And I love all y'all. But yeah, anyway. Yeah, it's been fun. Thank you all so much for chatting. This was very Thanks fun. for inviting. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thanks for coming, and for everyone who has survived this long, long podcast, thank you for tuning in. A real long podcast. My name is Corey Terry. And I'm Jordan Collins. And we'll see you next time. The Heinemann Cast is brought to you by the faithful and generous supporters of the Heinemann Settlement School. For over 100 years, we've been celebrating heritage and changing lives in central Appalachia. If you're interested in supporting the work of Heinemann Settlement School, you can go to our website at www.heinemann.org. Or you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at the handle at Heinemann School.